All right, I am just gonna do it. I can't stand the lighting in my studio downstairs and I need to figure something out. Like if I turn off the light that's right above me and just use the ring light thing that I bought, it's too dark. It's like pitch black in the background because there's no windows in this room. That light on the ceiling like makes my one side of my forehead so shiny because it's like coming from right there. But then the ring light like lights up the front of my face. Like I just hate it. It makes no sense. I need to be near a window, but there's no windows in here, which is great for a studio because it's soundproof and all that stuff. And when you're recording with someone, you want to have the professional lights on with no sunlight. But it's like, do I need a bigger ring light in the front? Right now I just have that little square thing that I posted. Also, remember the other day I was like, my face just looks exhausted. I figured it out. It's because the filler that I usually put under my eyes is probably gone or wearing out big time. And the Botox is like completely worn out. And I know, like I also have not been sleeping the best, but that's what it is. Like, look at the movement in my forehead if you're watching this on YouTube, which most people listen as audio, but my forehead is moving and I don't like that. I don't like my forehead to move. I like some movement around my eyes and stuff, but still, like, it's it's too much and it's got to stop. So I think I'm going to redo Botox this weekend um, when I go up north for Thanksgiving because my aunt happens to be a, a professional Botox person, so... I asked her, hey, you have any availabilities on Saturday? And she does. So going to take care of that. Also, remember the bruising I had under my eye from filler? I really love under eye filler because my eyes are like sunken in and there's like rings around my eyes, like indents underneath, which I know it's like humans have that sometimes, but I don't love it. So... I was thinking I don't want to get filler again injected at the site, which is what I had done last time, even though I've done that before and I had zero bruising. So I don't know what the hell happened last time, but it makes me nervous to not want to do that again. But they can do it. And I've had it done before with a cannula, cannula, which basically there's only one spot like in your mid cheek area that they poke this long it's like a thicker needle with a rounded end so that it can't like puncture things um so yeah there's only one point of like entry so i'm wondering if that would greatly reduce the chances of there being bruising and if it does then i might do that again we'll see anywho um this episode was not supposed to be about that but this lighting is driving me nuts and when I record a solo, I'm just like staring at myself into the in the screen and um, yeah, my forehead's moving too much. But episode 335, Matthew McConaughey. I was just on a PR call with a brand and the lady was like, I just have to ask you what it was like talking to Matthew McConaughey. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be the question that everybody asks me from now on and I'm okay with it. But what I have to say is he is such a gem of a human. He is so easy to talk to. And I always tell people this. There's the tiniest spider on my desk. Like, what the hell? I killed him with my fingertip. Anyways, I always tell people when you're interviewing traditional celebrities and think about it, everyone has a different style of conversation that they have even in real life like not for a podcast when you're chatting with people like people are different I get that but there's people who are very easy to talk to and it's like a flowing conversation and then I find with most traditional celebrities they're not used to interviews in the sense of you're having a conversation with someone they're used to a very structured conversation where there's an interviewer and they're like, let me ask you this question. Number one, duh. And then they blah, 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 like answer the question. And then the interviewer's like, question number two, blah. And then they're like, blah, 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 blah. And so 
I've interviewed a few more traditional kind of celebrities and sometimes they warm up like 10, 15, 20 minutes into it and they're like, oh, okay, this is how it's going to go. But sometimes they're very, um, it's like they just answer the question and then they look at you to like answer, to to ask the next question and there's no um, conversation. Matthew was not like that at all. He's actually the exact opposite. He is super engaged. Like, if you watch the YouTube video, you will see, like, how engaged he is. He is, like, talking with his hands, like, telling stories, like, just very genuine and just totally being himself. Like, he doesn't have these, like, um, answers that he's been working on and just, like, spits out, you know, it's, I don't know, it was so refreshing and I was like, what are the chances that the most A-list celebrity possible is that down to earth and easy to talk to and just, like, I knew that we had to wrap up because he obviously doesn't have all the time in the world and he just, like, kept talking and talking and talking. I was like, oh my God, like, it's nuts. And then when I tell people this, they say, well, not just any people, but people who work in the industry and have met a ton of celebrities, they say that the really A-list celebrities are that way. And that is why they are where they are in their career. Whereas people that are not Matthew McConaughey aren't as personable, perhaps. Anyways, I just couldn't believe it. Like, it was nuts. It was nuts. And like, from the moment his camera turned on, like, to join the call, he was like, hello, Renee. Like, just, I'm like, what? Like, you know my name? Like, you assume that they're just going to be like, turn on the computer. Okay, ask me my questions. Okay, got to go. Bye. Like, he's, I was just shocked. And everyone's like, how are you so, like, calm and cool and collected? I honestly don't know. Did I take anxiety medication that day? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But... I honestly don't know. I think I must have like blacked out. I And I just never feel awkward talking to people. I don't know why. And that's just not where my anxiety lies. Like obviously I was anxious because of who he is and I was nervous that he was he might be really difficult to talk to and like he doesn't want to be here and do you know what I'm saying? So I was nervous for that. But for the most part, like, I don't get nervous in social situations, which I've always been that way. Never, like, presenting, so nervous. Unless I can totally be myself. And it's like, that's why I'm not necessarily nervous to do, like, live mom room shows. I think they would be incredibly fun because, like, I'm just, like, going to be social and be myself. But if I have to give a presentation in school... Like, that makes me anxious, extremely anxious. So, I don't know. Like, I honestly don't know. I, I watched the, I never watch interviews back ever, ever, ever. I don't even listen to them. I don't have time. But this one, I actually went back and watched it. And I was just like, oh my God, he is so freaking cool. And how was I so normal? Anyways, it was incredible. And if you haven't listened, go listen or watch it on YouTube, um, it's really fun to watch him talk. He's just so, he was the best. Um, okay, so that was that. I did it. Pe- people are like, how did this happen? Um, I guess I should address that. So we reached out to his PR people. I made a joke, okay? I saw on Instagram that he put out this kid's book and I made a joke this was Thursday. I was in bed with like the worst cold ever and I was slowly recovering and I'm scrolling Instagram, which I usually never do, but I was in bed doing nothing and I saw that he put out a kid's book. So as a joke, I sent that and was like, haha, we should pitch Matthew to come on the podcast. This was Thursday night. Okay. I made this joke. Friday, I get an email. No, Friday morning, I get a FaceTime call 
and they're like, do you want 30 minutes or 45 with Matthew? And I was like, are you shitting me? I was like, no, like this isn't happening. Like this isn't happening. Like I'm in bed sick. Like what is happening? Um, so that was Friday morning. And then they came back right away and they were like, can you do Monday? And I was like, what? So I'm sick in bed on Friday. Milo's homesick now too. And I'm going to be interviewing Matthew McConaughey on Monday. I was like, this is fine. It's fine. It's not stressful at all. In my mind, I was like, what if Milo's not not well enough to go to school on Monday? Like what? Anyways, it all ended up working out fine. Milo was totally fine by like Friday afternoon. Luckily, I didn't have a lingering cough or anything like that. I never actually got a cough, thank God. But I was like, oh my God, what if I develop a cough and like I can't even talk? But it all ended up working out very quickly. It was like boom, 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 boom. So that's that on that. That's just, that's that's how it happened. Um. So yeah, I, okay, quickly before I get into the series of unfortunate events, I wanted to talk about how ridiculous leaf blowers are. Like the other day we were outside and Milo and I are like sitting on the front porch And my husband opens the garage, goes inside the garage and pulls out a leaf blower and starts blowing around leaves in the driveway. I'm like, this is the stupidest piece of equipment I have ever seen in my life. And I don't know if I'm biased because my dad never had a leaf blower. Like that was just not something that we ever had. And we did have leaves in the yard, but I think we just raked them up. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Anyways, he's like blowing the leaves around and then he goes on the sidewalk and starts blowing the leaves around the sidewalk, like to put them into the grass. And I was just like, I can't. And then he started talking about getting a more powerful leaf blower because we have a lot of trees here. And I was like, are you shitting me right now? Like, leaf blowers are fucking embarrassing. Like, you're, like, get a rake. And I understand it's more manual labor, but, like, it's like that Khloe Kardashian TikTok where she's like, you guys look like fucking clowns. You look like fucking clowns. Like, that's the feeling that I got watching him use a leaf blower. And I was like, honestly, like, our garage is full of shit. We need a shed so badly Can we not keep adding useless fucking tools and equipment into the garage until we get a shed to actually put stuff away? All these fucking stupid gadgets. Like, we need a rake, okay? That's it. That's it. And what's the big deal with leaves being in the grass? Like, what's the big deal? You know what else, guys? Squirrels? Like, we live in a squirrel jungle. That's where we live. And... Our house has flat areas of roof situations. How do you even say that? It's a flat roof. Is it roofs? Roofs? Anyways, we have flat areas with trees that are like over top. And we have walnut trees over top the house. And squirrels are fucking nuts. But they climb up all into the trees. Picture it. It's like a jungle. Like picture a squirrel jungle. That's what it is. And they chase each other and they're obsessed with walnuts. Like the squirrels love the walnuts. They, you see them scurrying around the yard with a walnut in their mouth and like the walnuts bigger than their head. And they like hide them in places. They take them into the front. There's no walnut trees in the front of the house. They will take walnuts to the front yard and like like eat them in the front yard. There's just walnut pieces all over the place, all over the front yard, all over our cars because the trees are over our cars in the driveway as well. And our cars are just covered in fucking walnut pieces. Also, thank God there's no walnut trees in the front because the walnuts would literally fall on the cars and like put a dent in the cars. The trees are so high up and the walnuts will fall from high up in the tree. And it's like 
a car drove into the house. That's what it sounds like. So I'll be doing work in the living room or something. And all of a sudden you hear like, bang. Or sometimes it bounces. It's like, boom, boom. And it's a walnut falling from high up onto the house. It's crazy. I'm going to take a picture of the flat part of the roof in the back and just show you all the walnuts that are on that roof. It is nuts. Anyways, you know what else they do? I thought I was ready to move on, but I'm not. They take walnuts from the backyard. They bring them onto the front porch. They either sit on the chair on the front porch or on the like cement part and they eat them there and make the biggest fucking mess. Also, it's like a light gray cement and I don't know what it is about the walnuts. I need to Google this, but it's stained the entire cement part of our porch in the front. I'll take a picture and share that too. Like, it's like a dark purpley and you can see squirrel footprints. It's like they mess up by eating the walnuts. They mess up their hands or paws, whatever you call them. And they walk around the, the front porch and leave like walnut stained footprints all over the place and a fucking mess. So that's and then there's the spiders, but I'm not going to get into the spiders today. Um, so this is my series of unfortunate events. On Friday, I had a very busy day. I was driving downtown. Now, I have learned my lesson. I will never, never put my car in to be serviced on a day where I have to drive any, any like length of a drive. If it's like local driving, whatever. But if I have to drive downtown or, you know, 45 minutes out or something, Never will I service my car on that day because that means I have to drive my husband's car. And I fucking hate my husband's car. When you're used to driving an SUV and then you get into this little tiny sports car that is loud, first of all, very fucking annoying. I just want to listen to my podcasts and it's like, like, Who the fuck do you think you are? Why does your car make so much noise? When a Tesla drives past me on the side, when I'm on the sidewalk, it's amazing. It's like silent. Isn't that so creepy? That happened to me the other day. A Tesla drove by and I was like, oh my God, it's silent. It's almost dangerous how quiet they are. My husband's car, not so much. So it's uncomfortable. It's loud. It's so fucking annoying that I can't just plug in my phone And everything on my phone pops up on the front screen. That's how my car is. I plug in my phone. Everything pops up. It's like the Apple CarPlay. And we're good to go. My husband's car wants you to connect to Bluetooth. So you can't plug it in, which is annoying because I want to charge my phone as I'm driving downtown. But no, it wants you to do Bluetooth and then somehow like connect it. And then you select like the Google Maps or whatever it is, I didn't have time to sit there and try and fucking figure out how to be able to use my navigation system from my phone and have it show up on my husband's screen in his car. And it's funny because as I'm saying this, I'm thinking about being in high school and having to drive to Toronto from Sudbury for like a volleyball tournament with zero cell phone. Like, zero phone. I had to pull into gas stations and be like, um, how do I get back on the 400? Um, do you know where like the fucking Howard Johnson is? And they'd be like, yeah, like you take three, three lights down and then take a right. Like, so it's nuts that we've come to this place in society where our cars just literally tell us where to go. And like, I can't go anywhere without turning it on Google Maps. So... I'm like, I don't have time. I texted my husband. I'm like, how the fuck do I get my navigation on your car? And he's like, you have to do this and that and this and that. And I'm like, fuck it. Like, I don't have time. So I'm going to just use the navigation that's built into the car. Okay. So I did that. I put in the address. It was in Liberty Village. I was meeting my friend for lunch at 1 p.m. 
I left the car. I left the, the house at 12 p.m. And it said, you will arrive at your destination at 1.15. And I was like, okay, text my friend. I'm going to be like 15 minutes late. She's like, sure, no problem. So I'm driving. The navigation sucks. It's like a bird's eye view. Like Google Maps will tell you what lane you have to be in because you're going to be exiting soon. It also tells you what the street or the exit is that you're going to be taking next and how far away it is. So you have an idea about where the fuck you're going. This didn't do any of that. It's like a bird's eye view of the highway, which is not helping me at all, at all. Like I can barely see shit. So I was like trying to pay attention to when it told me to turn and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, you know what? I've driven downtown from Guelph a few times now. Like I should be able to like figure out and like recognize where I have to turn. There's not that many turns. Like you hop on the 401. And then the, the piece that I missed because my husband's car navigation is a piece of SHIT is I didn't turn onto Highway 427, which then turns in the gar, turns into the gardener to be able to go downtown. So once I hit Mississauga, which is you're getting closer to downtown, my time of arrival just kept increasing and I was starting to panic and sweat. Now I couldn't easily text my friend to be like, okay, now it's telling me I'm not going to be there till 1.30 and then it bumped up to 1.45 and then it bumped up. It just kept bumping up and I couldn't easily text her because my phone was not fucking connected properly to the car. Oh my God. So when I was in like major traffic, I, am I gonna get arrested for this? But I quickly texted her and just said like, not supposed to arrive till whatever. Oh no, 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 I called her and put her on speakerphone. And I was like, uh, the time on my GPS just keeps moving up and up and up. And she's like, okay, well don't worry about it. I'm like sitting out here, like having a drink, like it's totally fine. I'm like, okay. Then I realized what the fuck I have not turned in like onto the gardener yet. So where like Guelph, for those of you who are not from this area, Guelph is on the west side of Toronto. And so I'm going somewhere on the west side of Toronto. So you turn onto this highway called the gardener and then you go right into downtown. I have yet to see the gardener, but I'm passing like things that I shouldn't be passing. So what I ended up doing was I ended up missing the turn to be able to go to the gardener to head on to downtown on the west side of Toronto. And I kept going on the 401 all the way through Toronto. And it's like traffic galore. There's nowhere to turn off to, you know how like sometimes navigation systems will reroute you. I don't know why when I first missed that turn, to be able to head towards the gardener, why did it not tell me to exit right away and turn around and go back? Like, no, it took me all the way across Toronto to the east side of Toronto, down the Don Valley Parkway. So now I'm on the east side of Toronto going into downtown, then across Toronto again to the west side where I needed to go. Rage. Like I got to the freaking restaurant and there was a parking lot, like a a public parking lot right beside the restaurant. That's what I had my address set as in the navigation. So I park. I'm so frazzled. I'm so late to meet my friend. I'm like sweating. Like it was just the worst drive ever. And once I realized that like, oh my God, I'm so fucked. Like it's taking me to the other side of Toronto You know when you have to like turn off the sound system in the car because you're so stressed out? Like I couldn't even listen to Armchair Expert. I was like, I can't have any kind of like auditory stimulation because I'm so stressed out. So I drove the rest of the way in silence, parked my car. I'm so late. Like I feel so bad, even though she was like, don't worry about me. Like I'm totally fine. I walk into the restaurant, sit down at the table and I'm like, I have the parking app on my phone because I had just parked in that parking lot a few weeks ago to visit the Sony building. 
So I already had it like registered into my parking app on my phone. So I'm like, I'm just going to go straight into the restaurant, open up the app and just pay for my parking through the app. (laughs) Okay, so I have lunch. Everything's great. They have my favorite beer, which is Blanche de Chambly. So good on draft. Um, Have lunch. Leave my car in the parking lot. My friend drives me to, I had an event in the same area, the same neighborhood. So she just drops me off. She goes home. I walk back to my car and I have like two and a half hours before I have to meet my other friend for dinner on like closer to the CN Tower. So I'm like, you know what? Like for this two and a half hours, I'm going to go to the Eaton Center and just like walk around the mall. Sure. So as I'm driving to the Eaton Center, I pull into the wrong parking garage. And so, fine, whatever, not a big deal. I'm like, I'll just park here because it's not easy. It's not like you can just reverse out once you've already pulled into the goddamn parking garage. So I'm stuck. So I pull in, park, and then I ask the parking attendant guy, I'm like, is it okay if I park here? Because the lot was almost empty. So I'm like, is this like a a workplace parking lot and it's going to close at a certain time. I didn't, I just wanted to make sure. And he's like, no, you're fine. So I'm like, okay. So I park my car there, go to the mall. The mall is always a fucking nightmare. I don't know why I ever go to a mall. I don't know why I feel so rushed. I feel I don't want to be there. All the stores that I am interested in are so far apart. So it's like you're walking a marathon And I was looking for one store in particular, Sage. And I'm walking and walking and walking and walking. And it's just never ending. The malls are never ending. And I was wearing my Sambas. Hmm? You guys remember the Sambas? Getting blisters on the back of my feet. I'll never stop wearing them because they're so beautiful. But fuck. So anyways, finally do what I got to do. Walk back to the car. I find it because it's a bitch to even try and find what underground parking lot you're in because it's all like office buildings. And I'm like, "Uh, what entrance did I go into? Anyways, I found it. That was great. Then I get a text from my friend that I'm supposed to meet for dinner saying I just got rear-ended on the gardener. So I'm going to be a little bit late for dinner. I was like, are you shitting me right now? what the fuck? So now I'm like, okay, I got to get to the reservation, like to the restaurant. So I drive and it wasn't a far drive at all, but it was so trafficy downtown. I'm like stressed now that I'm going to be late and they're going to cancel our reservation. So I get there as fast as I can. The reservation was for 730 and I parked my car at 731. And then I still had to like get out of the car and walk to the restaurant and find it. And I knew that usually they keep your reservation for like 15 minutes or so. So I'm like, okay, you can do this. So I park the car quickly, get out of the parking garage, walk to find the restaurant. I get our table, order a margarita. Uh, Everything was fine with my friend. Like she was fine. Everything was fine. And she's like, I'll be there soon. She didn't end up being that late, maybe like 25 minutes, which was fine. I had some work to do and I was enjoying my delicious margarita. So she comes, we have dinner, then we walked, we went to Giggly Squad, which was amazing. I get back to my car after Giggly Squad and I'm like, I couldn't figure out how to pay for the parking, but I assumed it was like when you leave, you put your credit card in because that's how most lots are. And then the little gate lifts up. So I get in my car and I start to leave the parking garage and I notice some papers on my windshield and I'm like oh that's peculiar get out of the car grab the papers I have two parking tickets and I'm like what the fuck like this is weird so it didn't make sense to me I'm like whatever I figured out that the lot I the last lot I went into you had to actually physically go to a machine and type in your license plate and prepay and then it would spit out a ticket for you and then you put that on your dash. I was like, what? What world am I in? Like no lots are like that that I have ever gone to in downtown Toronto. So I was like, damn it. Okay, my bad. 
I didn't take time to figure out how to pay for the parking when I got there because I was so in a rush and stressed out. So get that ticket, get home, look at the other ticket. And I thought they just ticketed me twice, but no, the other ticket was from the freaking parking lot near the restaurant when I met my friend for lunch. And you know what that was, why that happened? And I was like, of course, it's just like a series of fucking bullshit. I was so stressed and late for the lunch that when I sat at the table, pulled up the parking app, I just like clicked through to, you know, set my time until like 5 p.m., blah, 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 paid for parking. But what I didn't realize is that it was my SUV that was registered for the parking lot, not my husband's car. So to them, I, I didn't pay at all. Like I was not registered in the app. So I had $160 worth of parking tickets for one day of just going downtown trying to live my life. And the moral of the story is that it's all my husband's fault because he chose to service the car on a Friday that I had to go downtown and I had to use his stupid car. So he doesn't think it's his fault, but like, let's be honest. (laughs) Let's be honest. It's his fault for, first of all, choosing that car that doesn't just have an easy car play, okay? Never again will I get in a car that doesn't have car play. Oh my God, I didn't think that story was going to take so long, but... Anywho, um, that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening to my insufferable rant on parking tickets and my husband's car. And um, yeah. I hope you guys uh, have a great weekend. In Canada, it is Thanksgiving, so we will be going up to my parents' place. I cannot wait. Milo is going to fish, and he's going to have so much fun. And I'm going to hang out with my sister, and we're going to try and make TikTok dances, actually. We've saved some TikToks of dances that we want to learn, so stay tuned for that. And I'm going to be getting Botox, so this will be the last you see of my forehead moving. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.